I want to say, Kwamba, the reason why church, the Church of Kenya, shall not have a voice over BBI is because the voice of the church is muzzled. The Church of Kenya has been going through judgments. We have supported the hand of the wicked in Kenya. And as a result, God has judged Kenya. And also God has judged the church. Tunazishiriki unabii maana ni mapenzi ya Mungu. Mungu aliyefanyisha ofisi ya manabii, God who ordained prophets. He ordained us for a reason and a purpose. So we have prophets, but also we have holy prophets. Tuna manabii na pia tuna manabii watakatifu wa Bwana. So the Bible mentions prophets of God who are holy prophets of God. Then also the Bible mentions prophets Manduki ataja kwamba kuna manabi, lakini vile vile pia kuna manabi watakatifu wake mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Na please mujuani yo because wakati mungu anainua sauti ya manabi, jiwa kwamba there is judgment. When God connects you to a prophet, then be so sure kwamba there is judgment. So judgment either in um, in your favor or against you. Kusikiza sauti ya manabi ni hatari. Mana either mungu anakuhukumia wewe. Ama atahukumu kwa nieba yako. Mana kwamba wenda umegana mizo sana. Wenda kuna zohali ambazo mekufanyikia. Wenda kuna zohali ambazo mayapitia. Wende kuna magumu ambazo mayapitia. Wende kawa kwamba kilio chake mefiki ya buwan. Maano medhulumiwa amo mayangaishwa sana. And God, mungu katika hali ya kutaka kukulipizia kisasi. Kukupigania vita. Mungu akita kujonyesha hudari kwako. What God will do ni kwamba ata kushikanisha na mutu nabi. Then jua kwamba judgment is around the corner. Or you are in judgment. So hukumu hiyo wenda ni katika yote ni katika wema uh, yote ni katika ukuu wa Bwana. So either Mungu akulipizie kisasi ya kufanyishia haki. That is also judgment. So Kenya hii namna tulivyo sasa Mungu niliwaambieni miaka mitatu kuanzia miaka mitatu iliyopita kwamba there will be a lot of prophetic voices. Kutakuwa na sauti ya manabii sana Kenya. Na zitazidi until revival times and until rapture comes manabi wa mungu watanyuliwa wengi watasikika sana sana kwa sasa uh, Kenya imeingia katika hukumu tena rasmi vizuri na ni kwa nini mungu anatuweka sisi manabi mungu anatuweka manabi ili tunene mapenzi yake makusudi yake so God ordains prophets and he unveils them in, uh, uh, in every season to speak his will to warn. So I want us to do a kwamba manabi kazi yao ni kutahadharisha. So why prophets? The assignment and the office of a prophet is for judgment, for warning. For warning, for judgments, 
to herald repentance, to herald revival. So manabi wanafonyo na mgu kwa ajili gani. Makusudi ya mtu nabi, ofisi ya kinabi, ni mtu nabi ya mefanyo na mungu kwa mba apeane maonyo. Kutokana buwana. Number two, haka hukumu kutokana na buwana. Ama katangaza hukumu ya buwana. Tatu, ni kutabiri. Prophesy. Kutabiri pia na jumuisha hali hii ya kufundisha na kuhubiri. Zote na itua kutaku. Zote za itua kama nini? Zatajua kama kutabiri. So the word prophecy includes also preaching, teaching, exhortation, and also evangelizing is also prophesying. One as few. Can I have those monitors back me? They are not doing anything on the other side. So, mutu nabi ame inuliwa na buwana. So, tunamanabi ambao wana inuliwa na mungu. Number one. Tunamanabi ambao wana jiinua. Number two. Tunamanabi ambao wana inuliwa na mashetani. Number three. Tunamanabi ambao wana inuliwa na watu. Number four. So, all of them sound like prophets. But the only true prophet is that which is raised by God. That's why we call them holy prophets. Nasikitishwa sana na hali ya Kenya jinsi livyo sasa. Because niliona katika hali za zile vitu munga natupatia. I saw something like a free fall. Kenya is on a free fall. Kenya on a free fall. Yani kenye mungu katika hali ya muanguko ambao ni wakishindo. So sawia na mlimani, juu ya mlima, unaizafanya kweka kitu kama mpira ama gurudumu. Then zinyensi itakuwa inateramuka chini. It's what I have seen about Kenya. The free fall. So Kenya is in a free fall. Na... The church is actually on judgment. Kanisa la Kenya. And so the church of Kenya is divided into two. So Kenya's church is divided into two. Kanisa la Kenya megawanyika marambili. Tuna kanisa ambalo ni kanisa la mgu kweli. Kanisa takatifu. Kanisa takatifu tunaita mebeba mabaki the remnants. At any given time, God will always have remnants. Ata wakati inchi inangua sana, mungu anakuanga na watu ambao tunawaita mabaki. Bibile inawataje kama mabaki. Hao walio mabaki ni watu wala ambao bado wanaeza pambanua mapenzi ya mungu. Bado wanaeza enenda kwa imani kamili. Hawa ja ingiwa na chachu. The remnants. So we have the church of the remnants in Kenya. But again we have the pseudo church. It is a corrupted church. It is a deceived church. It is a blind church. Now how are the blind church? Diosababu Kenya in a pigwa na mungu. Over Kenya today, the spirit of God is grieved. And those who are remnants will know it. Kwa mbaro wake mungu Kenya hii. Amo katika huzuni. Maana Kenya tumetenda mambo ya nayo huzunisha. Tunatenda mambo ambazo na shangaza mbingu. Tunatenda matendo ambazo mbingu zina shangaza. Kenya imekua inchi ajabu. Na kwa ajili ya matendo zetu hizo za ajabu. Mungu wa naihukumu Kenya. We had opportunity as a nation. To come out of a circle of judgment. To come out of a circle of judgment. Tulikuwa na nafasi nzuri ya kujitoa katika barabara ya hukumu. Because the presidencies we have in Kenya, they have been judgmental. Kenyan presidency have been judgmental. 
Independence time is just when we got it right. But thereafter, after the senior Jomo Kenyatta, we've had oppressions. Natimecheze wangozi wa Kenya kana kwa manikichi ya kupeana kwa naefa. It has never been uh, justifiable. It's never been. It's been like a, a chase game. Imekuwa ni kama mchezo. Nani anapewa, nani ananyimwa. And God from heaven has been watching. Mungu toka bingu na mekwa kiangalia. And we've been having judgmental leaderships. Now, one opportunity when we're going to get it right, we got it right, is when uh, Moi relinquished power to Kibaki. That one. A lot of cry in Kenya. Opposition I mean oppressions. Then God gave us a window to come out of oppression. We got it right. But then after Kibaki, the second term, it's been a judgment. We've been, we have been um, fraudulent. Kenya has been experiencing uh, electoral fraud. Our systems are corrupt. Judicial system is corrupted. Election systems and processes are so corrupted, manipulated, including our Supreme Court lately. God has been watching. Our judges uh, are what Prophet Micah speaks. Prophet Micah talks about corrupted judicial systems. Our judges are liars. Our judges are corrupted. Our judges hmm, don't judge right. They are under influence. They are partial. God in heaven watches. And it brings judgment. That's why you see some of them die some very funny kind of deaths. They finish their races like uh, like trash. Because there's something God removes from them. Our police system is rotten. Our institutions are cosmetic. They are makeups. There is never justice in the king. And that's why God is watching with a keen interest to punish and to avenge. And so these presidential systems, we had a chance as a nation to at least make it right because God has spoken to us what his will is for Kenya. If there is a time that prophetic voices have been, uh, have been so vocal over Kenya since independence, it is in the now. The presidency, uh, presidential contest that is over, that is, I uh, mean, that uh, we've just seen, has been prophesied. There has been a lot of prophetic voices. Some are pseudo voices. Of course, they are also God's voices. Would not be. Zimeskika san. And someone, you must know that, I mean, it matters to God who becomes a king. It matters to God who becomes the prince. It matters to God who becomes judges. It matters to God who becomes, um, I mean, uh, I mean uh, who takes over. It, be, it matters to God. Because God always gives the opportunity to come out of affliction and to enter his rest. But Kenya, we are stiff-necked people. Our leaders have cheated us. Our leaders are, the, are, a, are a disappointment because 
the elections that we have had, they have got no reason for anybody to celebrate. There's no celebration over these elections. And it makes the office of the president looks, um, lacks respect and lacks honor. Because if we'll be doing everything and anything, plus being as scrupulous to enter it, then it loses dignity. There's no dignity anymore. There's no dignity anymore to that office. And I say so because Katika Ufuno in our dreams and our visions, the thing is we, we see at times about, uh, about uh, the house on the hill, the state house. It demands us to pray. Sometimes it has no walls. The walls are cracked. Walls are falling. We see defilement. We see darkness. We see pain in State House. Why? Because we are, we've chased God out of it. There are processes that qualifies one to enter State House. Should be godly. Should be righteous. Should be holy. Should be convincingly acceptable. Should be convincingly justifiable. So that it, uh, it come, so that it be honorable. But all we see today, it's not far. It's far from it. And that's what has brought, brought, that is what brings us as a nation. That's what pulls I mean, that's what um, retains us in judgment. So Kenya has just entered a facet of judgment, a new facet of judgment. It will be very hard. It will be very painful. Life will be so hard. Things will be so hard. People will cry in this Kenya. Economy will be so battered. There will be agony. There will be agonizing in this republic. Because only God commands a blessing. According to Psalms 133, verse number 1, to the end, the Bible says that uh, where there is some harmony, where there is unity, I mean, where there is order, there God commands a blessing. Just like they are nothing upon the head of Aaron. Equated to the what? Uh, equated to the oil flowing upon his, his, down his beard, from the head downwards, to his garments, to his skirts. The Bible says that there the Lord shall command that blessing. And there, God shall command life. In the absence of that harmony, then please forget about that blessing and forget about that life. Except for the remnants. Except for the righteous. The undefiled. Because man does not have what it takes to meet the needs of another man. Man must rely and depend on God. And so that depending on God is what qualifies us to be blessed and that you may have life. So minus God, then his minus blessing is also minus life. Our church leaders in Kenya have been quite disappointing. Our church clergy, they are the most disappointing lot. Because there must be a division between the state and the church. There must be a clear distinction. Must separate the church from the state. Now, I've shared a judgment about, about uh, I've shared a, a prophecy about judgment that is coming upon Kenya. There is no way God, you can commit wickedness and escape God's punishment. Even here on earth, 
When we do wickedly, the systems must judge us. Nature must judge. So how much more God? There's punishment. There's judgment. That will sweep across Kenya. And this is why. So listen, Kenley. This is why. I share, I share prophecy because there are people who are praying for Kenya. And uh, some people are asking me, now, how do we pray in the face of stolen leadership? How do we pray? How do we pray in the face of, um, in this face of uh, uh, evil rulings? Because we have had an evil ruling in Kenya. So how do we pray? So some righteous people are asking me, how do we pray? Because the Bible says that pray for the king and pray for the government and pray for the leaders. But so how do we pray? And to whom do we pray? And I've been seeking in God to know, so God, how will we pray? So how shall it be? Now, when the Bible talks about, commands us to pray for our leaders, it is in the perfect picture. Pray for your leaders. That is in the perfectness of picture. That they have gotten into their offices right. They have been qualified by the system justifiably to be in the office. But today, how sure are you that your MCA was elected justifiably? How sure are you that the MP was elected into the office by your vote and it is your vote that counted him? No cheating, no lying, no rigging. Because anything that results from an evil process is evil. Where the presidency where the parliamentary, whether humanitarian or senatorial, if the process was crafty, then the result is also crafty. So how do you pray? That's why there are some blessings that will not come. Today, I'm a Kenyan who is not proud to be a Kenyan. Because our systems gives us rejects. Our electoral system and judicial systems, they give us rejects. They defeat. They are always at war with the will of God to defeat the purposes and the will of God. So much that God never, it, it, I mean, uh, so that it's never seen as though God is in charge. And so people have no hope in God. People are hopeless because everything that we do in Kenya, we appear to defeat the purposes of God. So will God kill all of us? Will God kill everybody in Kenya? No, he won't kill everybody. And that's why there are some things that are allowed. The church that should have been a voice is in bed with criminality. A session of the church fronted by their leaders have gotten into alliance with the enemy. To give what we call a legal ground for the enemy to fight the will of God. This crafty church clergy, they are con men and con women. They are thieves, they are liars. And if they continue to remain where they are, there is no revival for Kenya. And that's where God will remove them. God removes 
in the same way for Samuel to reign as a prophet, Eli had to be removed by God plus his system. The same thing shall happen. And the same thing we need in Kenya. God removes the fire from the, all the church leaders and the top clergy and all those paving way for the will of God to happen over Kenya. Today, these church leaders, the top clergy, they purport to have uh, a voice and to manipulate the will of majority Christians in Kenya. And they have succeeded. They have succeeded. You hear them talk about church vote. This trend that has come to Kenya, the trend we have in Kenya now, will delay revival. Will delay revival. Because there is no revival until there is judgment. There is no revival until there is judgment. Judgment sweeps the way for revival. Judgment sweeps the way for revival. So there, there is no there's going to be no revival until we have judgment. And so prepare for that. That's how the pattern works. There are things that must be removed. People that must be removed. Systems that must be removed. Then we shall, we shall see revival. And so as it is today, Kenya is on a free fall because our church deceives us. Our church leaders uh, are leading in deception. Now look at it this way. The, our elections process and the results does not convince anybody who thinks soberly that they are credible. I'm not convinced, and I know there are millions of Kenyans that are not convinced either. But the thing is, we are so despondent. We have despaired. No one wants Kelele. And we are, like, hope, we are just like, God, what, you'll do, what is it? I mean, do what you can do. That's a state of despair. And if Kenya, if, I mean, the role that Kenya has taken, we may end up being like DRC Congo, the trend that Kenya has taken, we may end up being like DRC Congo. Because our church, the voice they have is a pseudo church, pseudo voices. Our church leaders have led, led us into disobedience. Every act of disobedience calls for God's judgment or punishment. Every act of disobedience, every act of sin qualifies God's judgment. And so in, in the Republic of Kenya we have seen there's that, there's that prophet I shared about uh, the pattern of judgment that will, will cover Mount Kenya and will cover Nairobi uh, and will cover uh, Rift Valley. Western. And I've been like studying the color. When you see the heavens have colors like these ones, orange, it means judgment. And um, there's something that will happen about those regions I've mentioned. And uh, our church leaders or the church clergy auctioned Kenya. They auctioned Kenya to the highest bidder. And these auctioneers 
Their auctioning was rubber stamped also very well. By our scrupulous judges. That's why it cast is a man who trusts in and relies or depends on the arm of flesh. We have yearned for justice. We have yearned for iniquity. We have yearned for peace. We have yearned for recompensation. We have, we have been yearning for restoration. But it cannot happen in the hands of the wicked. Our clergy are greedy elements that are building their own kingdoms and their own empires at the expense of souls in Kenya to know God. Kenya, we are religious. We are no Christian. We are religious. So now I should tell you Kenya is a Christian nation. We are a religious nation because 85% of Kenyans profess Christianity. Yet we get everything wrong. Judicial system is wicked, is rotten. Police system is rotten. Our electoral system is criminal. Then we are still 85% Christian. Someone do your mathematics. If we are, if that's the product, then the challenge lies with what we are eating. And if we are eating wrong, then be so sure those who are feeding us are responsible. You are as good as what you eat. You are a product of your feeding. And that's why God says in Jeremiah 3.15 that I, Jehovah God, I will give unto you pastors or shepherds according to mine own heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. If we are feed proper knowledge, proper understanding, we are feed righteousness, it will show. It will start with our Supreme Court judges. That is the work that our shepherds must do, the top clergy, and the bishops and the pastors. So if this nation, we are so wicked as we are, we are so crafty as we are, and we cannot trust anybody with anything, that's because there is a problem with what we are feeding on. We are not feeding on a pure word. We are not being transformed to be like Jesus. So if this thing is not transforming us, then something is wrong. We are being cheated with the word, but uh, there is no word as per se. So that's why, I mean, uh, there are no morals. So this uh, clergy of ours, they have gotten in bed with the politicians. And I said it in the prophecies last year. Church of Kenya, don't allow politicians in your churches. Don't allow politicians to do politics in your church. Treat them as ordinary members. Let them give tithes and offerings normally from what they earn. They earn what they earn righteously. Don't allow politicians to build your churches. Don't allow politicians to buy your buses, buy your buses. Don't allow politicians to finance church projects. Let them don't do don't allow them to do so because they are killing your churches. They are, they are actually uh, killing the flames of fires on your altars. But no, but pastors do know here. Every church that hosted politicians and politicians' politics in their altars, they have no power. They have no power, they have no grace. And no wonder today politicians 
they have no fear because church clergy are in their pockets. So they cannot condemn anything. They cannot criticize anything. And the words from the pulpit is disregarded as any other word on the streets. So you feel ashamed to be called a pastor because even the policemen I mean, are being bribed by pastors. So I mean, tell someone, hey, you've arrested my car. I'm a pastor and I, I, I think I, I made a mistake. And enter here. How much do you have? Forget about being a pastor. I have to rebuke a policeman. Because I don't bribe. I mean, I'm a pastor. So you caught my driver with a mistake? Can I talk to the, I mean, can I talk to uh, the commander here? You're asking for me, Pesa. They have to release my driver if you. So the policeman today, the word that you are reverent, you are a pastor, does not even move a police officer. Why? Because our church top clergy have been bought and they love something called bribe. So our judges also love bribes. Kenyan system hmm, has been intoxicated with the bribery. Money talks. And indeed, it has talked even to the top echelons of power. Money talks. God is like he no longer talks. This thing will delay revival. Now, there's something coming in Kenya that is called, uh, we are trying to make a, a Kenya, you call a Christian nationalism. Beware of Christian nationalism. Where our top clergy, church clergy, they are saying, Christians, we are the majority. So, majority must have their way. We must have a Christian president. It is not a must. We can have Hindu. We can have a Muslim become president. And God knows why. So you find that um, the church leaders fell into a trap. And there's a card that was dangled. One, the church clergy have been bribed all over the nation. And that's where as a church here, there is no politician that is that we can conduct Arambe here. And we do not take any donation from a politician. And we don't allow any rallies or anything that is political in this ministry. We've never allowed it. And that remains so. Because once a pastor begins to receive gifts from these people, you are corrupted, you won't see. And that's what has happened to top clergy. That they are, not, they are unable to design the will of God. So we have had the perfect will of God for Kenya in terms of presidency. That perfect will of, of God. It has been fought. It has been resisted. And it's been refused. And who has aided it? The church clergy. This very same, same, same top clergy, they have conducted prayers that are, are witchcraft prayers, which the Bible does not allow us. But in the realm of the spirit, those witchcraft prayers give Satan a legality to fight the will of God. Because when you pray with your prayers, you're just like a witch. In fact, Satan is so happy that he finds a man of cloth that are now praying outside the scriptures. Satan will act on it. So when you make prayers outside the will of God, the revealed will outside the scriptures, when you make prayers outside the scriptures, you pray 
against the scriptures or outside the scriptures or you bend the scriptures or you kind of twist the scriptures, it is called witchcraft. What do they bring? They bring what we call a spell. They bring what we call a spell. And yes, Kenya, we have seen the spell. We have seen the church gather in Nairobi. Church gather in places like central Kenya. And those have been areas of such gatherings. And what were they doing? They were casting spells. I sympathize with, the, with Kenya so much. The prayer that were being led by a clergy that we respected. I have respected the clergy, the likes of Bishop, uh, Bishop Lai. I have respected the likes of Bishop uh, Mark Karioki. I have respected the likes of, um, of Evangelist Teresa, Teresa Wairimo. Just to mention, and you know the prayers that have been conducted by them. I cannot make such prayers against, uh, I cannot cast William Ruto, neither can I cast Raila Odinga. The anointing I have does not allow me to do so. I cannot cast a king, an anointed king. But, uh, in the realm of the spirit, in the prayers, I mean, the things that are, I've been able to grasp. And people also know. Some people have trashed this man, Raila Odinga, and uh, some of his pictures requires Nakanyagwa with the prelates. Hmm? They are doing witchcraft, releasing spells, and that's how. Mount Kenya region were, were, were cycled into a spell. And you know what? You cannot wish my words away because what I told you earlier is true because I'm a prophet that uh, was ordained of God. And my head is a very sober head. Judgment shall eat like canker. When the Lord took me to the book of Amos, I said, God, okay. From chapter one of the book of Amos to the last chapter, the tone of God was the tone of anger. The tone of God, the book of Amos, 80% to 90% of the book of Amos is the wrath and anger of God. Shall God not visit These are the very, very, uh, among us, the top clergy in Kenya. Who have manipulated souls. They have manipulated a session of the church to believe that they, have, they know the will of God. And uh, the more the campaigns who have been done in church, the more they have been convinced and the more they have been convincing people that the will of God is what they know. They have been releasing curses, spells. Curses, spells in the land of Kenya. Yeah? Binding people with an oath. They bind people in a covenant. And you know what? When you bind people in an oath, it spreads like, I mean, it bounds. In the visions of the Lord, Eldoret is full of, uh, I mean, Rift Valley region is full of some dark beings walking like clouds. They have come down. Rift Valley. Why so? There were covenants that were done and spells that were cast and oaths that were cut traditionally in the land of Rift Valley. They found room because of the prayers that are made in wickedness by those who've been mandated to lead the church. 
So they decided to bend the scriptures and make prayers upside down. Satan gets a room. We call it a legal ground for Satan to do what he wants to do. And Satan's agenda anywhere, everywhere, any given time is to fight the will of God. That's why the times will be hard for Kenya because God is avenging. God can never assist, I mean, criminality. Neither can God be assisted with criminality. God can never have his will aided or helped or assisted criminally. Then he ceases to be God. He can't. But we have heard people who rob in the name of God. We have people who steal in the name of God. We have people now who oppress, who rob justice in the name of God. Will God not avenge? He will. Jeremiah 5, verse number 1 to verse number 11 says, Shall no I visit? In fact, Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse number, uh, should be verse number, number 9. Shall not God visit for such things? Will not God visit? That visitation is a judgment visitation. Now, our church clergy and the church wing, the pseudo wing, that are, that are fronting a, a Christian nationalism that believe that uh, what is happening in America, I've been studying and looking at it, it will happen in Kenya. They look at it as, as, I mean, as God's will. They have supported a criminality. They have aided criminality in our electoral system. And also, judicial system. Whereas the church will have stand out with a voice. They have gone quiet. The church has gone, they don't condemn any criminality. They don't condemn any injustice. In fact, they, were, they are always so ready to baptize it. That's the church of Kenya. The clergy. So, they are aiding what God has no rubber stamped. This is as a result of the prayers that were made eh? that indeed were just oaths to bind the voters. And I've said some of those prayers and uh, um, you know, were just spells and enchantment against a man that we really should pray that uh, he get to know Jesus deeper. But he was demonized, and the church has succeeded in demonizing uh, the man. To them, he's, a, he's like a demon. And so we have seen the church like Rabastam, they, they are bribed, and uh, their altars are built with the politicians' money. That's bribery. I know what? God will dethrone them. Bodies like NCCK, they are not serving any, any usefulness in the Republic of Kenya today. They are tribal, they are skewed in favor of one tribe. And they are just, uh, they are just political zealots. They are not spiritual leaders. And I, prof I raised a prophecy in 2016 about uh, NCCK. And uh, I don't know, EAK and all that. They are, they are a shell. They don't have God in them. These are persons who angle themselves for power. And the church leaders in Kenya today, they have been attracted to power. Attracted to power. And you're like, okay, those who get in power, what will you give to us? What will you get if this man gets to power? And that's why they have been, they have been, uh, uh, that's why 
they have been dancing to a certain tune. So if Rela doesn't give us money, Rudu can give us money. So where the bread is buttered heavily, that's where we go. When it begins like that, there's no God. Please, none of those people have seen me. I've not seen them. They have never come close to me. And I don't think they know if I exist. So no one should feel that I'm, 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 in, I'm not for any. I don't think they even know me. But I'm speaking the mind of God and the will of God and the anger of God and the reason why, should, why Kenya is judged. When, 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 uh, when the church takes the anger of uh, this nation of Christians, we are many. Anybody that is not Christian, that does not profess Christianity, is not a church elder anywhere. Eh? Cannot be president. We cannot have our votes. So I had, I had one man, uh, I had Bishop uh, Lai said, Try not forget Christian votes. Indeed. And I say, So Kenya, you have Christian votes. And when the church say, And the church shall vote in William Ruto. William Ruto should be voted in as an, a candidate, not as a Christian. Because the trend Kenya we are taking is that should anybody not be a Christian, he cannot, be, he cannot rule. Now this is where the catch is. Every politician will be learning how to be baptized with the name James, to be baptized with the name of Joseph, to be baptized with a Christian name and carry a Bible to church and give big offering. That's what will happen. So that they are qualified to rule when times come for them to rule. So this will be hyenas and wolves that go put on a, a, a sheepskin and the pastor said, mm, you're blessed. And, you, and uh, pictures taken around to show that you are a pastor. You are a, you are a church goer. And those are the ones who like in office. So, which means that Kenya will be perpetuating deception, hypocrisy, lies, and disguising. Having the image of God, but if using the real power of God. That's what has born Christian nationalism. It's very dangerous, but it's blossoming in Kenya. Because all the churches that were visited, the clergy that, were, that received goodies, they rallied their flock because they fell indebted to the one who has been giving them money. And so everybody wants to be closer to power. And you can be sure all the top clergy have forgotten their assignment with their flock. They are looking as to how and when they enter state house. And God is wandering from up there. And he has told me to come and say, he is coming to judge Kenya. And the blessing is with the held. Now this should worry you because we shall not have, right now we are being told that we shall have revival. There is no revival now. When the same, same church leaders, with one mouth they are telling you there is revival. Then with another mouth, I mean the same, same mouth, they are killing God's voice, killing God's fire, quenching the Holy Ghost, and refusing God's will. You must need to redefine Christianity. Because Christianity is not religion. Kenya is not I mean, Christianity is not religion. Christianity is our subscription to the practical principles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Religion lives to others. So Christianity is never a religion. We are not Buddha. We are not Islam. We are not Hindu. 
Those are religions. Christianity is not religion. But what this group are purporting is that they want to make Kenya a Christian um, uh, um, in a Christian nation. That means they want to make Christianity a religion. Amos chapter number 6 and verse number 11 to 14. If you look at, um, if you read there, you'll find that uh, God detests we celebrating anything evil. The book of Amos, because I'm finishing this prophecy. Amos chapter number, Amos chapter number 6. Those who want to know, I mean, to follow through this prophecy, take the book of Amos, take the book of Micah, take the book of uh, Jeremiah and Joel and lo look through them. Now, chapter number, number 6 of Amos and verses number Verse number 14. Amos chapter 6. If you look from verse number 11. For behold, the Lord commandeth, and he will smite the great house with breaches, and the little house with clefts. Shall horses run upon the rock? Will one plow there with oxen? For he have turned judgment into gall, that is Kenya, and the fruit of righteousness into hemlock. The righteousness that as a church we've been pursuing has been turned into hemlock. So ye which rejoice in a thing of naught, which say, have we not taken to us horns by our own strength? Have we not taken to us horns by our own strength? Jay, hiyo ni uongozi wa Kenya. Si tumaipata kwa uwezo wetu sisi wenyewe. Now the Lord said, behold, I will raise up against you a nation. Or oh, house of Israel, says the Lord, the God of hosts. They shall afflict you from the entering in of Ahmad unto the river of the wilderness. That's the judgment of God. Kwamba sasa, kisasi changu ni kwamba, hame yongile pale kisasi chake. Sabu kwa jivunia, kiswele ya semaje, semu hiyo ndawa someni, amosi sita msari wa kumina moja, hadi kumina nene. And for some intercessor, please, lilia mungu sana. Kwa ajili ya walio mabaki. Okay, kisuli ya sema hivi kwa maana, that is uh, Amosi sura ni sita msari wa kumina moja. Kwa maana, angalia, wana atawa amri. Na nyumba kubwa itapigwa na kuwa na mahali palipa bomolewa. Nyumba kubwa itapigwa na iwe na mahali palipa bomolewa. Na nyumba ndogo nayo itapigwa iwe na nyufa. Inawele kupigwa kanisa. Na kupigwa inji. Kupigwa maeneo. J. Farasi. Watapiga na watapiga mbio. Juu ya muamba. Iwezekani. Na J. Mtu watalima na ngombe huko. Of course. Uwezi lima maana. Milima na mawe ya manisha. Mapigo na judgment ya buwana. Hata mmegeuza huku mkua uchungu. Kenya huku mmegeuza kwa uchungu. And our Supreme Court judges were the hallmark of it. Until all of us will do as well. Nye Kenya wajinga wamekua ni wengi. Na matunda ya haki kuwa pakanga. Matunda ya haki Kenya ni pakanga. Watu wa mgu tumeomba, tumeomba matunda yetu ya haki kia uzwa kuwa nini? Pakanga. Ninyi munao lifurahia jambo lisilo na maana. Musemao, J, hatu kujipatia pembe kwa nguvu zetu wenyewe. Eh? 
pembe zetu zikatukuka kwa uwezo wetu wenyewe yani tumepata mamlaka kwa akili zetu tumepata mamlaka kwa ujanja wetu tumepata eh vyao hivi kwa kipesa ndio hii bwana asema maana angalia nitaondokesha taifa juu yenu enyi nyumba ya Israeli asema bwana Mungu wa majeshi na watawatesa ninyi toka mahali pa kuingilia katika hamathi hata kijito cha araba God's judgment when you celebrate wickedness eh? we have jubilation over what is not credible not godly not accepted of god so i say kenya kama kijana yako ni mzuri please ingia mahali pa kulilia bwana because we are in for a rough and a hard time i love you to wende usome sehemu hizo because the greatest mistake that uh, we have had is having in offices a lot that have not gotten to those offices ili i mean they have not gotten to them legitimately credibly and god who has interest on kenya is judging for those of us who are asking how do we pray because i've heard people ask prophets ask how do we pray i'll ask i'll tell you that in my prophets the word god gave me to release you can tell how to pray because god has said as for judgment is not relenting so if you look at amos chapter from chapter number 1 God is not relenting on judgment chapter number 2 God is not relenting on judgment chapter number 3 judgment pronounced and affirmed chapter number 4 judgment affirmed of God chapter number 5 judgment of God affirmed over Kenya read it all through pray that uh, people's eyes be opened pray that the as the lord has shown that he is moving fire from the clergy pray alongside god's will for revival to 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 blossom in kenya there must be change there must be a removal a prooting a prooting and a prooting of hmm, church leaders who are thieves church leaders who are building their own uh, kingdoms these politicians are financing churches in nairobi big churches and the church leaders rather than look at the interest of god they be looking at their own interests let's have him build for us things because he's been doing your choice is the greatest impediment to revival in Kenya the presidential choice of Kenya now is the greatest impediment to revival and the church will see and know it is the greatest impediment to revival that's what god showed me In fact those are the exact words that God spoke to me this morning that he is the greatest impediment to revival in Kenya so Kenya is on a free fall uchumi tetaramuka vitu itakuwa yani kutakuwa ni kugumu because the judges have resisted perfect will So can you on a free fall church and judges resist God's perfect will Hatima ya wengi itakuwa vigumu kufanikishwa Baba weshie milele help me the Lord I'll always be willing and ready Lord to speak your word Pray that God of heaven 
I be not indebted anymore. I've spoken your word as you wanted. Those who need to be warned, let them be warned. Those that need to be judged, let them be judged. Those who pelt with stones and rubbish your word, judge them swiftly. I pray like Amos prayed. And Lord, he never means his words. Thou, my Lord, shall preserve and keep me is your voice. I pray for the remnant, the church of the remnants, true prophets, true saints, the true elect, they that Lord are yours, they that Lord my Father God are focused on you and carry your spirit. Preserve them and Lord protect them. Encourage their hearts, Lord. And we pray that thou, my Father, will do unto us, Lord, as thou hast deemed it fit. Want to pray the Lord. Help them the Lord are seeking your help. Help them the Lord are seeking your assistance. Them that are seeking deliverance. May you help them, Father. We pray that thou might go. will also remember to strengthen the houses and the families, Lord, that have been robbed, oppressed, cheated, that Lord have been deprived, that Lord my Father God have been swindled. Them the Lord have had their stars and destinies hijacked. Thou will contend for them. In Jesus' name we pray.